Hello and welcome back to the last module of our MOOC Microbiome and Health. In the last chapter we discussed the current and obviously alarming situation on our planet and in this chapter I would like to give you examples how we can make use of the microbiome to achieve sustainability for us and our planet within the context of planetary health and the sustainable development goals. The Sustainable Development Goals, short SDGs, were formulated by the United Nations and are defined by the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. They address the global challenges of our time, including climate change, poverty, inequality and environmental degradation, and are meant to realize peace, justice and prosperity for current and future generations. The responsible management of the finite natural resources has been recognized as the major task throughout the goals to achieve a resilient and sustainable society. The microbiome has the potential to advance many of these SDGs, such as SDG 2 – Zero Hunger Certainly, the most important topic is food. Humanity simply relies on food and the control of world's population is based on food. The entire political control is also around the food chain and whether it is delivered in a safe and fair way. Food is the linking factor of environmental and human health. Research on plant microbiomes will support targeted and predictive management approaches that are suited to the specific conditions in the field and can thereby result in greater sustainability. Agricultural products based on the microbiota are one of the fastest growing sectors in agronomy with a compound annual growth rate of 15 to 18 percent and a predicted value of over 10 billion US dollars by 2025. In addition, microbes can be used to produce foods, to improve the nutritional value and to improve fertility of soil to convert it into arable land. Microbes can also be used to recover natural environments. One example is the Aral Sea. The shrinking of the Aral Sea is an environmental disaster and caused by the unbending agricultural intensification in the catchment area of the lake. High concentration of toxic agents are drastically increased in soil. This is reflected by serious public health problems. We studied the microbiome in the dried basin, now called Aral Kam. Plant growth promoting and stress protecting bacteria are missing there, which offers an option to restore the vegetation by microbial inoculants. SDG 3 – Good Health and Well-Being In one of our previous modules, you learned about the huge importance and potential of the microbiome for human health. It does not only contribute to inter-individual variability in all aspects of a disease, but also represents a potential target for health management, such as therapeutics, dietary changes, the use of pre, pro and symbiotics, life biotherapeutic products corresponding to a species or a mix of species and microbiome transplants. Our constant exposure to chemical pollutants from the environment is another important factor for human health in the Anthropocene. Microbes perform significant when it comes to bioremediation of polluted sites and the degradation of waste in general. Health in general is dependent on the balance of the microbiome. If it is disturbed, outbreaks of pathogens can occur and even develop into diseases, epidemics or pandemics. The discovery of complex diseases has led to the introduction of the term pathobiome, which is characterized by a severe dysbiosis and often, but not always, connected to microbial diversity loss. Deciphering the pathobiome will become important for understanding persistence, transmission and emergence of pathogens. Also practices implemented during the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic have substantially contributed to increased biodiversity loss and a corresponding loss of resilience. Researchers even warn of further consequences of the pandemic for the microbiome and human health. SDG 6 – Clean Water and Sanitation Microbes can simply purify the water in rivers, streams and lakes. SDG 7 – Affordable and clean energy. Microbes can be used to produce biofuels, to be not any more dependent on biofuels produced from food sources. And there is also an exceptional potential of microbial biotechnology to achieve another SDG, namely SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. Microbiome research is a source for new enterprises, job creation and employment opportunities. SDG 13, 
climate action. In our oceans, 90% of life is microbial and they fix about 10 billion tons of carbon from the air, which represents two-thirds of total carbon fixation in oceans. But microbes also produce greenhouse gases. Especially in soils, microbiota can be improved and shifted towards those that do not give off greenhouse gases, but consume them. The microbiome and microbial-mediated processes also suit ideally to a new global economic framework, the fourth industrial revolution. This framework is around making use of big data processing, connectivity and artificial intelligence, as well as many other features, but at the same time envisions sustainability, zero waste, complete recycling and no harmful emissions in the context of circular bioeconomy. The main goal of circular bioeconomy is achieving sustainable well-being in harmony with nature. Using microbes does not require extreme conditions or energy intake or the supplementation of toxic agents and the products they produce are natural products and can be degraded by the environment and other microbes. Circular bioeconomy ultimately relies on microbial diversity and is characterized by interlinked microbiomes. Advances in engineering of environmental microbiomes will replace toxic chemicals in agri-horti and aquaculture in the future and stimulate a more sustainable use of environmental resources as well as improve our food processing. So at the end I'd like to ask you to keep in mind that microbes are everywhere from deep continental and oceanic subsurfaces up to the troposphere. They are essential drivers of evolution and their actions during the entire history of life on Earth shaped the biogeochemical composition and properties of today's ecosystems. Today, microbes generate almost half of the oxygen we breathe and they influence greenhouse gas emission and climate change. They are waste recyclers and fundamental for clean water supply and their contribution to plant, animal and human health is absolutely significant. The microbiome interconnects all life on Earth and understanding those connections across diverse hosts and habitats opens the potential for innovative and holistic approaches to diagnosis, treatment and intervention within the context of the One Health concept, thereby managing the sustainability of the Anthropocene and planetary health. Certainly, microbiome-based solutions and technologies are a key to address the 21st century challenges. So with that, we came to the end of this massive open online course. Thank you very much. At the end, thank you for participating and your curiosity. For you, we translated all our knowledge from 30 years of microbiome research and an extended literature search into that MOOC. We all contributed. Birgit, who guided us through the MOOC with her ideas and the voice, Matthias, who is our talented designer, and Ahmed and Tommy and me with concepts, advice and presence. Similar to the microbiome itself, we work together in a synergistic manner to produce that modern microbiome textbook for you. We are aware that it's not perfect, Therefore, we are open to receive notes and comments. We are also aware that microbiome science is advancing rapidly. So, send us your breakthrough. We all hope that you now see the world from another perspective and appreciate the values of our little friends and helpers, which keep us and our planet healthy. Thank you and goodbye.